I have a presence. I give respect, I get respect. It's like do or die for me. I'll push you and I'll push you and I'll push you and I could be a little bit anxious, but that anxious and that nervous energy makes me get these images. The first time I picked up a camera was skateboarding in my cousin's backyard. The Dogtown crew used to come to a Surrey retreat in the backyard and Alvo dropped his plexi half pipe and we had a transition ramp. And uh, my uncle took photos and they called him uh, blown photo because he always missed. So one time I picked up his camera and I took photos and, and I remember them coming to me later on and saying, you have amplitude and altitude. You should shoot. Beautiful. One ten. Okay, you guys, we're done. When I came back to the States, I came to the agencies, knocked on a few doors, and Herbert's agency, Visage, put me on in 1989. My first job was three ads for Vogue, and then I started getting letters from the music label saying that this guy's amazing, we're gonna use him. Here we got some Tupac, NWA. We're gonna print this today. Easy e and Tupac. A few months later, a guy named Skate Master Tate, he was like the record collector, told me to come over, DJ Mixmaster Muggs was sitting on his couch and we ended up talking about a new thing he's developing called Cypress Hill. And from there, I went to Cypress Avenue and hung out with all the Be Real and you know, Mellow Man Ace and all those guys were down there and Ralphie and everybody. And then it just snowballed into a career in hip hop. What's interesting about Mike's role in shaping the aesthetic, the vision of what West Coast hip hop looked like in the 80s through 90s is that the aesthetic that you see in his work is something that has become iconic in the ways in which we think about West Coast hip hop and LA hip hop in particular. And the aesthetic that you see is one of LA abandoned. There's a lot of visions of abandonment, visions of decrepitude, burnt out train yards, burnt out warehouses, deserted back alley streets. We have a very particular spatial relationship that we associate with LA hip hop. And I think Mike's photography certainly either fed out of it or fed into it both ways. Early Snoop, Too Short. Badass MC8, Alcoholics Exhibit. Here's back in uh, when he first left NWA with the Jerry Curls kind of phone. This is a real iconic shot. This is LA right here. LA Dodger hat, Carhartt, um, Cortez sneaks, 22, not escape. California right there. I was in love with NWA's first album. I mean, I, I must have played it hundreds of times. When I was able to photograph Easy as for the source cover, I was a little nervous, but you know, I was just so stoked to be in the presence of such a iconic rapper. And so as far as this shot goes, I just walked around the neighborhood and I saw a gigantic flag in his parking lot. So I was just like, okay, and that was it. You know, I just come up with ideas and I do them, I make them work. To me, I, it's one of my favorite shots I have ever taken. The WC and the Mad Circle album, where WC's down, it's an LA skid row. Hobos and bums off the street are, are in the background. There's something very gritty about that. You know, WC's in a, this dirty white t-shirt. We went the night before to get the pass to um, shoot down on skid row. We ended up befriending the guy that ran the alley and we offered him a case of Old English, 40 ounces. 
so we ended up going down the next day and everybody posed for the shot. And then the guy in the middle holding uh, Coolio's hand was Scrap Loke, the guy that gave us a little, little uh, hassle before we got the okay, but it was funny. My portfolio spoke volumes of what they were after. That street look, that gritty look. Hammer even came to me and goes, make me look hard. You know, so I was able to, I guess, capture that, that rough, roughneck style. This is one of my favorite prints. And I made, you can see his fingernail polish. A lot of times Pac, um, he was very quick. He gave me like, boom, done. So it'd be like one frame I got. Just like this, I got three frames on this one where everybody seems to gravitate to this shot and go, I grew up with that, I had posters of that. Tupac had such a visual charisma that what you see in Mike's photography of him is both his defiant and thug life self, but also just the remarkable charm and charisma that he had. And you can really see that reflected in there. I shot that in East LA, off Santa Fe Avenue, in 1994 for his album cover, Volume 1. The shoot right here with the Thug Life belly was with the Thug Life crew. We were at an abandoned train yard, and we were taking photos on this old building where he's doing the flip off as well. I pull him back, I do a couple lighting tricks, and it just goes dark and looks like a studio. Great times, man. That book is amazing for me just to go back and reflect on all the great shoots I had. Thug Life, Tupac, rest in peace.